In the fall of 2013, the College of St. Scholastica Athletics won five UMAC team titles, had three NCAA postseason berths, and one individual national champion. But, as a new season begins, along come changes. As we say goodbye to the seniors of the previous year, an influx of freshmen begin to shape a new team. Increased training stimulates the body and preseason camps provide for the necessary team chemistry. Perhaps the biggest change came when head football coach Greg Carlson retired after the completion of last year's season. He is replaced by the new face of CSS football, coach Kurt Ramler. Ramler, when asked a few questions, embraces the change. I, you know, the, the thing that's been great is the guys already know how to win and how to prepare to win. That's been phenomenal. Um, they're a good team already. They're great leaders already. They've got great work ethic already. So it's really just a matter of us uh, helping them apply those things to the direction we're going to head now. Last year, the team won the UMAC title in a dramatic fashion. This year, Coach Ramler is quick to construct a fresh atmosphere with his motto. Each individual is striving to become the best they can be within the framework of a team. We feel like if we play as well as we can play each game, um, that we'll win each of those games. The first big test for Ramler and the 2014 Saints football team will be on September 6th at Public School Stadium against Ripon College. They're a tough team. Um, I mean, they're they're a good program. Um, they've got some big dogs. They've got a good had a good record last year. They do some interesting things on offense. They run the wing T, uh, which is unique. Um, it, it's it's different to prepare for than other defenses, other offenses, I should say. Um, so it'll be a real challenge. Um, I think we'll find out a lot about ourselves in that game. Like the Saints football team, the men's and women's cross country team are built on a winning tradition. Coach Steve Finkston tells us about his goals for the season. Well, for the women's team, it's to get to the national meet. To well at regions, get to the national meet. For the guys team, it's improve on last year's region finish, which was 10th and probably about our best ever. And then on the guys side, Chris, Chris Lawson, in addition to the women's team maybe having a shot at getting the Nationals, Chris Lawson should have, a, if he stays healthy, should have a legitimate shot as an individual at Nationals, like Chelsea did last year. Chris Lawson returns last year after finishing as an all-region runner in 2013. Coach Finkston also implements individual goals among the team. If people are willing to commit and they want to run, we'll take them. we got 32 women, 16 guys. The goal for each and every person is to improve. Improve. Wherever you are, last, first, and in the middle, improve. Another exciting event that will take place in Duluth will be the UMAC Championships on November 1st at the Hermantown Soccer Complex. Once every eight years you get to host the conference meet, it's an exciting time, tension in the air, leaves done falling, a little frost on the ground, it's awesome. November 1st at Stebner Park in Hermantown, so 10, 10 minutes from campus. Coming from a much different perspective, Coach Dana Moore talks about rebuilding a young volleyball team. Last season was tough. Um, we were young. Uh, we didn't have a lot of upperclassmen leadership. Uh, we just relied on one senior, and that, that was pretty tough on everybody involved. But again, now I look to the future of this season, and they've picked us third. My gut instincts will be that we'll be higher than that uh, because we've really got a lot of kids who played on the court last year that are returning. And what we have said all week in practice is what a difference a year makes with our, our sophomore class. And they, they have a lot of influence on the court, and they are really looking good. Coach Dana Moore and the women's volleyball team are very excited for their first early home game. The best thing about this is that we play early at home. Never do we play this early at home unless we host a tournament. So that'll be great. So I think because it's that first weekend um, that I think we'll get more fans that weekend. It'll be really exciting to have them come out and get a, get a taste of what volleyball looks like on this campus. Also constructing a young team is Coach Barry Chasty, who is working with 17 incoming freshman men's soccer players. Well, certainly the chemistry piece is something we've worked a lot on during preseason here. Um, I think we'll be a different looking team. Uh, I think, you know, I'm a big believer you've got to play to the, the, the player's strengths rather than this is the way I want to play and the players have to fit in. So um, we've, we've looked at the players and, you know, we will probably look a little different this year than we have in the past, but um, they're coming together, so it's good. Entering the 2014 season, the men's soccer team is ranked number one in the UMAC preseason poll. Yeah, I was kind of surprised we were picked number one considering all the people we lost this year. Um, but I think, 
I think we have to accept it. And like you said, everybody when they come to play Glasgow come comes with their best game. And um, you know, it's always a challenge. And then to have to play a team potentially three times once you get to the final four, that's that's really tough. You know, to beat any team three times is a is a challenge. And you know, we're going to have to make sure we get everything right when it hopefully when it comes to the time for the final four. Dave Ryaltz of the women's soccer team also received a number one ranking from the UMAC preseason poll. The team returns this season after a devastating loss in the 2013 NCAA tournament. Down 2-0 at halftime, come back, tie it up 2-2, and then with about three minutes left, we, we score a goal that we all thought was a good goal, and the linesman called it no goal, and then 10 seconds into overtime, they scored a beat us in sudden death, so it was, we went from, you know, being back against the wall at halftime to total elation thinking we had just you know won the game in the second half to to heartbreaking loss and you know the, the very beginning of overtime and when you have eight seniors and you know all great kids it's it's hard to you know it's hard to hard to let go of that but uh you know I, I think our returning players realized that we took another step forward you know get closer to to you know being able to compete against the the elite level teams in the in the country and uh um, you know they took the challenge to work their butts off all summer and be ready to get going this fall. The Saints look forward to their tournament in Texas and the UMAC games this season, especially with a bullseye on their back from being ranked number one. I think, you know, we, we've got a, a formula, obviously, a, a formula for success, and, and uh, it's really just the hard work and competing every single day in practice and, uh, you know, continuing to, you know, to balance that, uh, the, the fun that, you know, that gives you the passion for the sport, but also, you know, being serious and being focused and uh, working hard. I think, you know, we, we accept that, we accept the challenge of, of being ranked first and having the bullseye on our back, and, uh, and we like that role. And, and you know, we'll run from the front and we'll see if anybody can catch us. As each sport tells its own story, the underlying similarity is change. And this fall, Saints Athletics should be a testament to a change that we can all look forward to.